G'day guys, welcome back to True Footy for the uh, round 18 power rankings or the, at the conclusion of round 18. I'm going to do that thing where I try and rank all 18 teams based on how good I think they are basically and how likely they are to A, make finals, uh, win the premiership, win the wooden spoon. Again, the criteria for this is always tricky. Uh, it's kind of plotting form a little bit and trying to give you a more realistic ladder as to how good teams are right now. Doing this video historically, it's always tricky to be honest. There's probably only been a handful of ones where it's been quite simple but this I think having put it together this morning may be the most difficult power rankings I've ever done in terms of the fact that it's just probably the most different to the actual current ladder of all the videos that I've done this season it's interesting to be doing this in round 18 and saying that but I think we just hit this weird point of the season where some of the teams that were performing strongly in the first half of the year and are still relatively high on the ladder have dipped down in form massively and some of the teams that were in and around the bottom four not that long ago are suddenly pushing up and making serious pushes for finals. As such, the power rankings in this video is going to be quite different to the actual AFL ladder and may reflect the final ladder come the end of the season because the finals race is still blown wide open. But to clarify, this is not a ladder prediction. This is plotting how good I think the 18 teams are in order from first to 18. So as always, I welcome your constructive criticisms. Uh, obviously, it's hard to get this perfect. I'm trying to really consider form um, and also proven ability in this particular video. So as always, I welcome your thoughts in the comments section below. As always, this video is brought to you by manscaped.com. If you have male grooming needs, which you probably do, go no further than manscaped.com for all your male grooming needs. They've got the Lawnmower 4.0, which is a state-of-the-art body hair trimmer, gets the job done quickly and easily. I've been using it for several years. I charged it up this morning because I just went to Croatia and it's been a good week and a half since I did anything down here. Side note, I've been getting a lot of compliments on this mustache in Europe and I'm thinking about adding a second mustache somewhere on my body and I can use the Lawnmower 4.0 later today to make that happen. That's a joke. I really don't recommend getting a pubic mustache. Anyway, 20% off and free shipping on any product that you buy. You just use the code TRUEFOOTY20 at checkout on the website manscaped.com. That's free shipping, 20% off. It's a great deal. Please enjoy. I'm going to make it different in this particular video. Uh, normally I go from first down to 18th. I'm going to start from the bottom, um, just like Drake, and progressively move up the ladder. So we're going to start with the 18th and 17th ranked teams, I guess, which are no shock to you, I'm sure, North Melbourne and West Coast. Now, West Coast in particular, I think we've seen a real improvement in the last three weeks. I've kind of mapped out their previous five. They lost all five, shock, shock. And in that last five, we did have the massive loss to Sydney and the Crows, um, which were horrible. But the three games since then, we've seen an upturn in improvement. That being said, without any wins in there, I'm not gonna move West Coast up the rankings. And to be honest, it remains to be seen whether they are actually even close to North's level at the moment, which says a lot, because North Melbourne have been going through their own woes. They started the year 2-0. and They've lost, what is that, 16 on the bounce? My God, 15 on the bounce. They've been competitive at times and in other games just looked really, really lackluster, a real team out of confidence. So surprise, surprise, North Melbourne and West Coast are 17th and 18th. I've still got Hawthorne in third last. They are clearly better than North and West Coast uh, as evidenced by the two games against them. In fact, uh, they're 3-0 and against those teams this year. They've also beaten Brisbane recently, so they've certainly gone up in estimations, but I think there's still a little bit of a gap between them and the next worst side, which is now Fremantle. Now, again, uh, it, I, I feel a little uncomfortable putting them in the bottom four. It's kind of just an encapsulation of their current form. And to be honest, it really speaks more about how even the group of teams are above. But Fremantle on current form is the worst of that group. In their last five, they've only beaten the Bombers. They've lost to the Giants badly, the Dogs, the Blues, and the Pies, which to be honest on paper, those four teams are in good form collectively now. Well, certainly the Giants, Blues, and Pies, the Dogs are just like a, a decent team uh, who you'd expect to beat Fremantle anyway. But so on current form, Fremantle have been a lack, bit lackluster, really poor losses in there. There's not a big gap to the next team, but I have got a one team plummeting. And this is probably cl close to the biggest difference between their actual ladder position and where they are in my power rankings. I've got St Kilda as the 14th best side in the competition, despite the fact that they're six on the ladder. They've won one of their last five, and it was a narrow win over the West Coast Eagles by eight points, I think it was at the end. Admittedly, that was an improved West Coast, but collectively St Kilda have been on this downward slide. And I can't put them ahead of some of the teams that I've got ahead of them, which I'll get to, but they've lost to the Suns, they've lost to the Demons, Lions, and Tigers. So admittedly, not the easiest fixture, but their most recent loss to the Suns 
puts them below Gold Coast, who will have in the next position in 13th, which is where they are on the ladder. The Suns have obviously sacked their coach in between me doing this video and the last power rankings I did, and uh, I'm still yet to decide whether I really agree with that decision, because some of their fixtures have been quite tough. They've lost to the Power and the Pies, the two best teams in the competition, and the Blues, who are red hot at the moment, and they've beaten the Saints and the Hawks. So kind of a par for the course, sort of uh, run of five games for the Gold Coast Suns. Them beating St Kilda puts them ahead of St Kilda on current form. I think that's fair to say but realistically still a way off the top eight teams. But again, the gap's not that big. I've got the Sydney Swans in 12th and they currently sit 14th on the ladder and they've split their last five games perfectly in half with two wins, a draw and two losses. Their two wins are against the Dogs and the Eagles. They drew with the Cats and they lost to the Tigers and the Lions. So again, pretty mediocre, I suppose. Drawing with the Cats is a good effort. Beating the Dogs is a good effort. Um, and then they lost to the Tigers at the G and the Lions. So kind of par for the course but again we also don't just look at the last five games you have to look at where they were prior to that and I, they're probably still a little bit of ahead of Gold Coast and St and the teams that I have below them purely because we know how good they can be and you do take into account reputation and, and how good this side could be on their day but as the season wears on Sydney really really haven't taken that step towards finals then I've got the Crows a team that has plummeted hard I think I had them like fifth or sixth the last time I did this and again it's partly their own form and partly the strength of the competition around them some of these teams that I'm going to mention have really shot up but Adelaide have won two of their last three there are only two wins in that time were North and West Coast so not really wins to write home about and they've lost some important tests against Essendon the Giants and Collingwood again it, it kind of speaks to just how even this part of the ladder is because I don't know if I'd clearly say that Essendon for instance are better than Adelaide even though they just beat them it's probably one of those ones where whoever's home is likely to win that game but they're on a downward spiral they've got a tough fixture their recent home loss against the Giants was a bad wasted opportunity even though the Giants are playing good footy at the moment Crows are in a little bit of a slump and therefore they drop in my power rankings although to be honest they're still ranked higher on my power rankings than they are on the ladder in 10th spot I've got Richmond who have enjoyed an improvement in form since Hardwick stepped down. I'm not saying it's because of that, although sometimes teams do play well under a new coach inexplicably, but they've won uh, four of their last five and I think five of their last six. They had one really poor loss against Brisbane, although you know how good Brisbane are, but in isolation it looked poor, but when you consider they've beaten the Eagles, Swans, Saints and Fremantle, some solid results in there. Richmond have shown a clear improvement and they're still nudging away at finals. Why are they higher than Adelaide? Well, they're higher than Adelaide on the ladder. They've beaten them there this year and in current form, they would probably beat them as well. So Richmond, the 10th best side in the comp right now. In ninth spot, just sliding out of my top eight is the Essendon Footy Club who sit eighth. So just one behind where they sit on the actual ladder and they are two and three from their last five games with a good win over the Crows and a good win over the Blues as well right before the Blues seem to turn things around. They lost to Fremantle in Perth which on current form is not a great result and they had that huge loss against the Cats uh, which was a bit of a reality check. They did play pretty well against the Power and unfortunately fell short in that game. So again probably just around that middle of the ladder position. On current form I just have some of the other teams ahead of them which we'll get to. In 8th spot I've got the Western Bulldogs just holding on. They're another team that has gone 2-3 and three from their last 5. They're currently 7th on the ladder. Their two wins have been against an out of form Fremantle and a terrible North Melbourne and their losses have been against Port Adelaide, Collingwood and Sydney. So some tough tests in there. The SCG, even against an Adam form Sydney, is always going to be a tough proposition for a lot of teams. Because of the relative strength of their fixture and the fact that they're higher than Essendon on the ladder, that's why I've got them slightly higher. I'm really intrigued to see how this weekend goes because these two teams in the Bulldogs and Essendon play each other and I'm a little bit at a loss because I can see either team winning. I have tipped the Bullies and therefore I think they're slightly better. In seventh spot, I've got Carlton shooting right up to seventh. They were in my bottom three three I think like four weeks ago but it's not just that they've started winning games it's the way they've started winning games their stoppage game in particular their midfield connection to the forward line the quality of the inside 50s their other avenues to goal they're starting to hit the scoreboard really consistently their four and one run includes that 50 point win over Port Adelaide which is the most compelling result of any of the results I think recently they smash Frio in Perth they beat the Hawks and they beat the Suns convincingly as well so four 50 plus point wins in the last five and their one loss was against S which again was kind of the point at which they've kind of turned it around. So again, I'm just trying to plot exactly how good a team is right now. And Carlton's form is so different to what it was before that they are genuinely dangerous against any of the top eight sides right now. And that's why I have them in seventh because I think this run of form is different to Richmond. In sixth spot, I have GW West who currently sit ninth on the ladder. And to be honest, on current form, they feel like they're destined to play finals. It'll be interesting to see what the fixture holds for them. But in their last five, they've gone five and oh. They've beaten the 
Crows in Adelaide. They beat the Hawks as you'd expect. They beat the Demons and they beat Fremantle convincingly and they beat North Melbourne as well. And they're starting to look like a top eight quality side. And throughout this year, there's never really been a point where GWS have looked really awful. It just feels like under Adam Kingsley, things are starting to click with a group that is starting to get used to the new coach and the game style. And to be honest, they look like a top six side on quality. It's hard to split them and Carlton at the moment. It'd be interesting to see if they played each other. So maybe I could have that auto mixed around a little bit, but GWS is either the sixth or seventh best side in the comp right now. In fifth spot, shockingly, I have Melbourne dropping a spot despite their heroic win over the Brisbane Lions last week at the MCG. And it was a win that ironically, I think does reaffirm them as a chance for the premiership this year but i still have them dropping one spot purely because of the form of some other teams which we'll get to but they're three and two in their last five they've just come out of a mixed bag of form their wins were against the lions saints and the pies in their last five so that is actually a really good result they've lost to the giants and the cats as well to be honest i don't really have too much negative to say about melbourne i've been positive on them for a while but let's talk about why they've dropped one and that reason is geelong who of course we hold some maybe some bias for because of how good they were last year and they were the clear best Team last year by a long way and it's just one of those things where you have to take into account how dangerous this side is you know historically as well we are more trustworthy of a Geelong at this time of year than most other teams in their last five they've gone three one and one with that draw against Sydney they lost to the power in Adelaide which is a tough fixture and then they've beat up on some teams like Essendon and North whilst also beating Melbourne so again maybe this one is a little bit too biased I guess towards how good Geelong are historically but to be honest does anyone not consider them a premiership contender right now I think you'd be silly not to Therefore, I do just in my heart think they're more likely to win the flag than Melbourne right now. Then you've got our top three. Um, we'll just map it in order. Collingwood, then Port, then the Brisbane Lions. So the same top three that I've had for a little while now. This is a tough one. I do think Collingwood's the best side in the competition. Port earned their right a second, but Brisbane are a bloody good side. They've won four of their last five. They nearly made it 5-0. and oh. uh, Obviously, got their hearts broken against Melbourne, which I don't think is a indication of their lack of quality. I think they just shut up shop too early, went into their shells, a psychological thing maybe. And so they're clearly behind Port Adelaide and Collingwood, but to be honest, still a genuine premiership contender. Would they beat Collingwood at the MCG on grand final day? I don't really think so, but we're just projecting how good teams are right now. Therefore, I have Brisbane third. I have Port Adelaide second. Collingwood haven't really put a foot wrong for a long time now, and they're the best team in the competition right now. And I can't wait for Collingwood v Port Adelaide at Adelaide Oval this weekend. I hope the power get up just to make this premiership race even more interesting than it is. But in my opinion, we've got five teams that can win the premiership right now. Melbourne being the least likely, but still absolutely in contention. And then you've got probably from six down, that's where it gets a little bit more murky. But as always, guys, I welcome your opinions in the comments section below. Let me know what I got right and wrong. Obviously took a few leaps in this video with Carlton and GWS as the six and seven best side. And I had other teams plummeting as well, which I'm sure will upset a few of you. But as always, welcome your constructive feedback so that next time, I can potentially do it better. Make sure you check out manscaped.com for your male grooming needs. You get a great discount, a great offer. You'd be helping the channel. Only get something if you want it, obviously. I'm just saying. But as always, guys, I appreciate your support. Thanks for getting around the channel and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.